let's watch a little of this clown show before I start my day because once I start doing the calls, I run out of enthusiasm for the topic of TriMet. It's such a fucking shit show. You have no idea how bad it is out there. So let's listen to these disconnected elites talk about what they've been doing. This is going to be the board reports. So let's hear from these disconnected elites that either know what's going on and choose to ignore it or don't have any idea of what's going on because the only information they get is from their executives, which is a possibility. The only one that might actually, the only one that seems to come out of his little shell is Ozzy. But even when he comes out of the shell there, he's, you know, of course he's defending TriMet always. That's his job, I guess. I mean, you don't get on that board if you don't say TriMet is the best transit agency the world has ever seen. Words, and he will provide an update on the latest Committee on Accessible Transportation. Check. Director Edwards? Whoops, uh-oh. Thank, Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I did not attend the meeting last week, but the check, um, check. staff has provided a um, report. And thank you, Chris Hunter, for that report. Um, I'll just read some of the highlights here. Um, uh, Sam DeSue check, check. and um, staff appeared before the board and discussed decisions of a federal judge regarding the TSA and the federal mass mandate, which has been lifted. Um, they talked about improving safety and security. Um, on the uh, transit system, as well as um, executive, um, the steering committee met as well. Um, Monty Todd, um, of course, is um, uh, convening that committee, and they're working to um, address the safety and security system. Um, there were upcoming events in the organization. I'll dispense with those, um, talking about some of the monies uh, for the uh, budget that we just approved and uh, the climate action plan as well. Uh, Skidmore Fountain area, um, it's been cleaned up and the tents have been removed. Um, they've had new, added new cameras there as well, and uh, along with some lighting. Yippee! The Saturday market has resumed in this area, which is very important. Also, they cleaned it up for Saturday market. They didn't clean it up, you know. They just, they just moved the people somewhere else. Just, you know, and they clean up a homeless camp. They just steal all their stuff and then make them move to another area they don't nobody's doing anything about the homeless in america because we are americans and we hate the homeless and we hate the poor and we hate everybody we want to kill everybody because we're americans commerce um and uh, bringing some kind of normalcy to the area as well um, some kind of normalcy see that <laughs> arrogance in that you know, this is your elites for you. They they look as all of these dispossessed people as trash to be removed. If you don't understand the problem with that, then well, we're gonna get what we deserve anyway as a, as a country here. It's coming. Don't worry. Hold on. Oh, probably happened in my life. Um, the um, approval of the um, agenda. That's. I'll pass on that. Um, what? And um, the announcement from the chair, uh, Jan Campbell, um, we talked about the paratransit and um, are we still doing mass there? Um, and we followed up with some lift conversations about the lift um, as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll pass on the rest of the report. And that was completely useless. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director Edwards, does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, I'm going to then uh, next on, go on next this morning with an update from Director Kim on the Metro Policy There's Advisory Committee. There's a bunch of people missing there. Who's missing? Let's see. Uh, what's her name? What's, what? <laughs> Not Michelle Wu, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Pootie's girlfriend. Whatever. I can't, my mind is just not working anymore. Uh, you know what I mean? Let's see who else. One, two, three, four, five. I, I guess there's only seven, right? President Dr. Simmons, Kim. if I may, uh, my board report hasn't been finalized yet from the MPEC. Okay. May I submit it to you and the rest of the board later today? Yes, thank you. What do you mean? <laughs> what? Oh, you mean you're going to... You're going to... <laughs> you had a month to get this. You don't have your board report ready? 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, now then, we're going to have an update from Director Lewis on the Reimagined Public Safety Committee. Director Lewis? Um, thank you, Director Simmons. Our last uh, Reimagined Public Safety Advisory yeah, Committee was on April 19th um, via Zoom, very active, um, busy meeting. Um, that particular meeting, we actually had a presentation on our security that carries arms from the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. But we started our meeting with um, safety and security updates that we <laughs> receive each month, mainly of those um, issues or incidences that appear in the local media or on the news channels. That <laughs> All right, Ricky, how do you like that? So they don't talk about anything that we, they just admitted here in public at the meeting, and those of us who pay attention to this, like six of us, I guess, they, they, she just admitted they don't talk about any of the stuff that we hear. They just talk about the stuff that makes it to the media, which is like nothing, which is interesting. See, this is why I should be watching these, because you pick up these little tidbits. It's just so painful to watch these people. It's, it's like watching Biden or Trump. It's painful to watch because you, you know what you're seeing is a bunch of elites trying to tell you how things are. And they they just, they don't have a clue, none of them, or they're liars, one or the other. That way, the members of the uh, committee and council can ask further questions. After that, we... And of course, she doesn't bring up what the incidents were, which would be helpful. We talked about this before, they don't actually tell you. They don't want that in public. We had the uh, public affairs team. They shared an update on the community-based mini-grants, and I... See, look at that, the community-based mini... They're rolling in dough over there, but they can't find operators. And their solution is a one-time bonus that's paid out over three years. And you don't even get the top wage until three years. So they rip you off. It's all, it's public relations gimmick. They have no interest in, so, in solving this shortage in a real way. I would like to thank um, Adam Manish and Anna Diana and Celise. They're members of our community that actually... Anna Diana? <laughs> ...stepped up to be part of the evaluation group for those R RFPs. Yeah. Um, in the back. Giving away money in the middle of the chaos. Here, come get your money. We have money flowing out of our ears. Don't try to get a bus or train. You might not get home for two hours after you thought, but uh, we got money. So two weeks from now, we will be finishing up. And I think the first week of May, we'll, we will be making the final decision and awarding those contracts. Yeah, there you go. Get the money. Um, our presentation from Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, well, I'll just want to add, the last couple of months we have brought forth each of, like, the safety response team, and the, uh, last month... I don't hear them at all. Very rarely we hear of them. They're not, they don't have a vehicle either, apparently, so they're, they're like, stuck on the trains because there's no way for them to get around. We actually had Multnomah County Sheriff's Office team present who they are, their training, um, who they collaborate with, and we've had a few personal presentations from members of those teams. And so it was really, really well um, accepted in the committee of a chance to ask questions directly. Um, the presentation was by Sergeant Aaron Shinovsky from the Sheriff's Office, and we do invite members here and our board for ride-alongs. If you wish to ride along with our safety response teams, um, please do so, and you can contact uh, VP Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to highlight, we did highlight the training. We talked about the demographics, and I think that was an earlier question of who the safety teams represent, and they do represent the communities. They represent the organizations of... They represent the communities, the organizations. What a crap. What a load of crap. You know, I... I... What's this shit? Where they come from. 
We also, during our public safety uh, advisory meeting, have an open forum. At this particular meeting, there was no, um, no one bringing forward a comment from the community, but we do allow um, thoughts and ideas and questions. Our next meeting is uh, May 17th, and that concludes our report. Yeah, what a great report. Thank you, Director Lewis. Um, are there any comments or questions? I'm just so happy to hear all of the work that's moving forward. This all is the a work priority that's moving forward. Not only mine, but the full board and the agency as well. So thank you so much. <laughs> this is hilarious. It's hilarious. How can you listen to this shit? Much. Uh, for our final report this morning, uh, John Gardner, Director of Transit, oh. Equity, Inclusion, and Community Affairs, will provide an update from the Transit Equity Advisory oh, Committee in place of Director Wei, who's home recovering from COVID. So <laughs> Double vax and boosted, I bet. <laughs> yeah, man, that was a great program they rolled out, didn't it? Wasn't it really prevented a lot of... Uh disease passing around. John, welcome. Thank you and good morning, President Simmons, Can't members of the her. board. She's uh, not as bad as Warner, but she's almost as bad as Warner. Um, I'll be brief, uh, but I'm available for any questions you might have. So we've had amazing uh, participation over the last two years of COVID with, you know, volunteer community-based organizations between 14 and 17 every month coming to inform TriMet about what's going on in their communities, but also hear what we're trying to do and inform that process. So. This month's meeting was a continuation of that effort. We first what? focused on giving folks an update on the Better Red project, as you heard a little <laughs> The Better Red, the project that gives you nothing, okay? The project that uh, puts in some new tracks around the airport and around Gateway that gives you, the consumer, nothing, as they still don't have train operators. Complete, you know how I feel about this, complete waste bit about this morning uh, we recently had a service disruption because and there are four planned as we sort of construct that project where we were able to have a hundred TriMet volunteers work and provide ride guide services and get people to and fro uh, different bus shuttles to make sure they can continue on their day and there'll be three more planned events but it went I did hear from somebody inside the agency that the bus shuttles were fairly efficient so that's a kudo, I guess. At least they got that part right. Very well. Um, I'm sure they cancel regular service for it. We're in the process of doing our FX bus operator training, so many of our TAC members are seeing those big green buses out in the community as folks get prepared for the September 18th launch that uh, Executive Director Nana mentioned earlier this morning. Okay. We also reminded TAC that our access transit grant period is open now. Last year, we awarded uh, $1.8 million in Access Transit Grant. Money, money, money. We got money, folks. Don't try to use our transit system, but we got money. Free fare grants to about 115 nonprofits across the three counties, and we're in that process and doing it again. And uh, many of our TAC member organizations uh, participate in that program, so we're asking them to help get the word out. We also shared updates around the federal mask mandate and the subsequent changes that have happened over the last few weeks because these organizations are great stewards of helping us get that information out to the public. Um, as Maya said, and I want to thank her for coming this morning, we also talked about TriMet's uh, uh, climate action plan. And uh, just sort of circling back to what she was saying, a lot of members um, asked questions about our transit-oriented goals, goals for addressing higher density near tri uh, transit, and housing and legislative priorities. Uh, members also noted that placing, they, they really want to see TriMet, as Maya said, place greater emphasis on reducing miles traveled um, and increasing ridership and focusing on reducing single vehicle usage, even if it means using diesel buses in order to keep a reliable and substantial service in place. So I just wanted to recognize that it was a robust conversation. Now, the bulk of the TAC meeting really centered around our stiff pilots that we're still sort of working to formalize. And just at the high level, because we're in conversations with ODOT, the high level is to sort of repurpose low-income fare resources that we did not spend during the previous uh, year and a half and, and send those. More money, 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 we got money, 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 money everywhere. You can't use your transit system. Back out to low-income communities, including um, uh, low-income high school students through a summer pass program. Um, vulnerable, low-income seniors, veterans, and people with disabilities through increased grant programs, and investing in our low-income participants 
with an um, uh, initial month of ridership when they renew or when they begin the program. And so I think probably in the months to come, we'll do more of a robust presentation on where that project's out. But right, at, but right now, we're just working with ODOT to sort of finalize the project, and then we're going to build it out with TriMet staff to make sure we can launch on time. So in general, it was a great conversation. Again, great participation, and looking forward to the next meeting. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you. Well, questions? When is the next meeting? The next meeting uh, is the second Tuesday of um, May at this point. And I don't remember that date offhand. But everybody is welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. Thank you. Thank Look you. at her. Look at this woman. Thomas? Look at this. Yes, thank you. Uh, President Simmons, uh, I am prepared to present my evidence. Oh, oh, we have a Very good. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, at the March meeting, which was last month, immediately following our uh, board meeting, uh, MPAC discussed the proposed RTP and the MTIP amendments on the I-205 tolling project. And uh, discussion took the entirety of the meeting. And according to uh, certain staff members from the city of Hillsborough, actually, who was attended for years, they, it was the most lively MPAC conversation and discussion we've had mm -hmm. in years. Um, and many MPAC members um, uh, had questions, and they were focused on if the tolling on I-205 could sunset if the separate regional mobility pricing program does not move forward. And there was lots of discussion about that, and uh, um, many um, lively discussions on, on that. And in light of this concern from some members, MPEC members, passed a motion that Metro consider additional language to sunset of tolling on 205 um, yesterday. They will never sunset that. That's going to be another grab of cash from the from the surf class. It's never going to be. We're never going to get rid of that. Uh, well, actually, two days ago, Metro Council did vote in support of the RTP and NTIP exactly. amendments for I-205 tolling uh, with a letter of agreement in place between Metro and ODOT securing additional commitments on issues that had been voiced at uh, JPEG as well as, 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 well as MPEG. Um, and to be sure, our TriMet members, uh, staff board members, Staff, staff members, not board members, participated on committees on transit mitigations for the I-205 tolling and regional mobility pricing project, as, as well as... That's like 10 years away, and here they've already got paid staff working on it. Uh, serving on the Equitable Mobility Advisory Committee uh, to discuss how future tolling could be modeled for um, using our, off of our low-income fare program, and uh, also integrate our hot as well. Thank you, President Simmons. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will now turn to the general manager for his... Uh, we already heard that. Um, before I sign off here, uh, let me do one more thing, which is... Whoops. Okay. I don't know what, when this happened, but hitting a cone now is is considered an accident. Let's let's listen to some of these. Seventy five zero nine, uh Westbound on Woodstock at forty first. Hey seventy five oh nine, I got your it was request to talk. How can I help? Oh, uh, there's a stalled truck at the northbound stop at forty six in Woodstock. You can squeeze through, you have to run the candle over. That's what I just had to do, but you might want to send a message out to the uh my follower. Okay, 46 and Woodstock, is it on 46 then? Uh, yes, ma'am, right at the corner on 46 and Woodstock. Okay, do you have a description in all of the vehicles? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's a uh, maroon colored Ford F-150. It's uh, it's angled out uh, like they were trying to park. They said they lost their keys, so they can't put it in neutral and let it close back. Okay, copy that. Um, uh, do you think there were some candlesticks there that you had to run over? They have a candlestick, uh, the black and yellow, uh, like, uh, manufactured speed, uh, separate the lanes, and then there's a candlestick right at the beginning of it. I just had to kind of run that over and, and go past. Okay, copy that. We'll have a supervisor check out the truck. Thank you for letting me know. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Same to you. 735. All right. Next call. 
See how that thing is made to fall off? It's made to fall off. In other words, you can, it's made to be hit. It's not, a, it's not a stationary object. So somebody's broken down somewhere and he, and he hit it or he ran over it or whatever. But since when is hitting something like this a PA? It wasn't that way in the 20 years I drove buses. I hit 100 cones, maybe even 1,000. I remember going through construction zones where they were all uh, the cones were all placed in such a way that you couldn't you couldn't clear them with the bus. So I just knocked the whole the whole goddamn row all over the place like bowling pins, and they were all over the road. Never heard a word about it, and why should I? It's goddamn. <laughs> You're not at a bus rodeo here. So I mean that's just the latest uh, bullshit at TriMet that uh, I noticed was, what the fuck? 